I'm Relentless MC, and welcome to my 10 HP friendly Pyramid Plunder Guide. For the skills needed, you are going to need only 21 thieving or higher. I recommend starting at 51. Items needed, you will need a Pharaoh Scepter. To charge that Pharaoh Scepter, you will need noted artifacts of your choice. You will need a lockpick to make getting through the doors easier. You'll need a teleport to a bank. I'm going to be using a crafting cape. You could use a dual ring or anything really. You will need an antidote plus plus for anti-poison and you will need an inventory of cakes. Now, each room will have a level requirement, starting with room 1 requiring level 21, room 2 31, room 3 41, room 4 51, room 5 61, room 6 71, room 7 81 and room 8 91. You're going to want to thieve the last two rooms that you can. Okay, so this is what your standard inventory and setup is going to look like. I highly recommend bringing a regen bracelet, as it is going to make your life a little bit easier here. Um, but it's not necessary. Um, I'm just wearing the standard graceful to conserve run energy. I have my scepter. I'm bringing two antidotes. My noted artifacts for charging my scepter. A lockpick to make it e easier to get through the door. And then roughly 10 to 15 cakes. I'm using my crafting cape as a banking option. And that's basically it. I do highly recommend configuring your shift click via Relight to use on the scepter. So you can just simply hold the shift key and then click the scepter to use it on the mummy when it runs out of charges. Uh, just a little quality of life thing you can do. I like to just hold the shift, click the uh, scepter and then use it on the mummy and then just hold the space bar to go through the dialogue choose whatever artifacts you're going to be using to charge it and boom it's charged all right so let's do a quick run the most efficient way to do this is going to be with at least a partner or more people and the way we did this was we had a little setup so to the left and in, in a clockwise rotation um, of the direction you're facing there's a little numbering system so the first door to your left is going to be door number one, and then two, and then three, and then four. And that's going to help you call out which door was the right door when you, if you find a door before your teammates. And then you can call it to them, and it'll help them, you know, save a little bit of time. But now, since I'm level 84, I'm going to be thieving room six and room seven. Those are the last two rooms. You're always going to want to thieve the last two rooms that you can. So... Up until that point, every room before, you're just going to loot the chest and find the door. And the main reason you loot the chest in every room is because there is a 1 in 1000 chance that you will receive a scepter. And in the event that you do receive a scepter, you will be kicked out of the game. And um, you'll, you'll arrive outside of the pyramid. And the scepter will usually be on the ground because most of the time your inventory is full. But um, yeah... You're going to want to pick that up. That's They range between 5.5 and 7.5, sometimes even 8 mil. Um, very valuable. Also, there is a pet chance per room per chest. Um, and I will put that information up on the screen now. You may notice that each of my doors have a tile highlighted. Um, this t just makes it a little bit easier for me to find the doors. At this point, I've done enough thieving. I know where they're all at in each room. But it just it's something that's really helpful when you're first starting out, at least, especially. And just to make it a little bit more streamlined, you know, just to m make things go a little bit more smoothly. If you want to, you can use another roommate program um, called Ground Markers. And once you have that enabled, you can just hold the shift key and then right click any tile and highlight it. And I just highlighted the tiles um, in front of each door in each room. And this, I don't know, I found this to be very helpful. Okay. And now, after this room, I will be coming up on a room that I can actually thieve. Um, since, again, I'm 84 thieving, I'm going to thieve room 6 and room 7. So, now I'm in room 6. I will thieve this room before checking the chest, because the chest does have a chance at spawning a Scarab Swarm, and as a level 3, 
I'm not going to have a chance against that. So if I do open that chest first, I'm going to have to leave if there is a Scarab Swarm. And here's how I like to do things. It, it makes it a lot less irritating. It might not be the most efficient way to do this, but it's definitely the least aggravating. Is as soon as you check an urn, if you fail that urn, just immediately right click and check for snakes. It's just going to make your life a lot less miserable here. And it's, I don't know. I, for the longest time, I did it without checking for snakes. And I just kept spamming the urn until I got it. And it was just, I don't know, it got really frustrating. But also, you're going to want to leave room 6 and move on to room 7. Or leave your second to last room and move on to your last room. I like to move between the Q and the I. Up on the timer there where it says thieving level required, 71. I like to leave between the Q and the I to give myself enough time, even if I fail a lot, to make it through the final room. Because the final room is where your best XP is. It's the most important one to thieve. And for anybody who was wondering, you do get a, for checking for snakes, you will get a fraction of the XP that you get for just searching the urn successfully. And then you will get the remainder of the fraction of the XP for actually successfully searching it. So it's the same XP if you just were to search it successfully or if you were to check for snakes and then search it successfully. It's the same XP either way. That's why you always want to search first because you can potentially skip the whole checking for snakes thing. It's also why it's not the most efficient to check for snakes. However, I find it like... I don't know, a lot less aggravating. Um, and then as time goes on, you will collect a bunch of these gold. I like to just fill my inventory up with gold seals or gold artifacts. And they actually have some value. I mean, when I hit 99, I had about 2 mil worth in artifacts. But also you can just use them for charging up your scepter. So it's nice to collect some gold artifacts. And I'm almost out of time there, so I see I ran myself out of time. I tried to loot that chest quick before I ran out of time, but that was it. Then it's basically as simple as just clicking your scepter and starting again. One mistake you want to avoid making is running yourself out of charges and not recharging your scepter before going to a bank or something. Because then you will have to take the long way to get back here to charge your scepter or buy another scepter with charges. To get back here and charge your scepter and then resell it's just a hassle so always make sure that you're checking your charges after each game and charging your scepter immediately if it's out of charges and then it's just back to starting another game um the more people in a world it, like if they're not in sync with you if you guys aren't all running because you'll have a lot of bots who come and check the scepter and or check the chest and check the sarcophagus for scepters and then they'll just leave and restart the minigame. Every time someone restarts the game, the rooms reset, the doors reset. So, you know, some people in your team could find the right door and then it's not the same door for you, which can be annoying. So sometimes you want to find a world where you don't have a bunch of these bots. Speaking of which, one just died. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically going to sum up Pyramid Plunder. Um, Again, you just leave the last two rooms. Every room before that, you just check the chest and find the right door. Um, you leave the last, leave the last two rooms that you can, and the last room being the most important. So, aside from that, it's all really self-explanatory. There's not much else you need to know. Um, if you do die, you know you have an hour to get back. You're gonna be fine. Maybe bring a lockpick, a couple of cakes. Um, and an antidote potion and, and you're fine you can pick the rest of your stuff up when you get here um you'll keep your scepter you know you'll keep your three most valuable items which the scepter is definitely going to be one of them um you don't have to wear graceful here either i have 99 agility so i will i usually just fashion scape here it's not too big of a deal i don't ever <laughs> find myself running out of run energy but um that's basically pyramid plunder in a nutshell um one last thing to note is you're taking three damage per urn until the last room room eight you will take four damage i believe it's four 
So yeah, in the final room, just be a little bit more careful. If you have 4 HP and you loot an urn and you get denied, you will die. Um, whereas you would be 1 HP in every other room if you did that. But yeah, so it's just one extra damage in the final room. Um, but it's still pretty doable. In that final room, like, if you're running with uh, pairs, you're going to get roughly, you know, like, I was getting like 220k XP an hour, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it, it, it might start off slow, like, so you can only receive up to room 5 or something. It's not going to be the greatest XP rates, but it, it goes pretty quick. And once you get those higher level rooms, your XP rates get really nice. And yeah, that's, that basically covers it. Avoid the sarcophagus. You will get a couple of strength levels if you do open it. Um, it has a long animation. Uh, usually if you click it, you're going to have enough time to click off of it or at least catch on and click off of it. You should be fine, honestly. Um, it is a little bit scary, I understand, because you could ruin your skiller with one click. But um, if you're paying attention, you should be fine, dude. It's pretty hard to accidentally open the sarcophagus. But yeah, that's going to cover the Pyramid Plunder Guide. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, be, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. And yeah, happy plundering. Peace.